untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today I'm taking another look at a Paradox Engine One Ring deck. It is definitely not the most interactive deck in the format, so I understand those who do not like to see this deck in action, but for me I've been enjoying it as kind of a fun way to relax and combo some people out. And this is my latest iteration of this deck. I've tried the build with Kinnon and Emery that plays blue and green mana and a splash of red. I've also tried a mono blue build with Emery on the official Wizards channel, where I post a week video on Saturdays usually, and then now I'm uh, trying out this colorless build with still Semblance Anvil and Cloud Key to discount all our artifacts, so that's also a combo I've featured in the past with the Eggs combo deck, which is very similar to this, and then we can use Mystic Forge to play spells off the top of our deck, sometimes for free if we get enough of these cost reduction effects in play, and then now I'm also introducing the Paradox Engine to this deck alongside a bunch of mana artifacts like Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mind Stone at 2 mana. And then we can also manipulate the top of our deck with Maze Mind Tome, which can uh, scry just by tapping it. So if we untap it with Paradox Engine, we can also potentially make sure we can keep playing spells of the top with Mystic Forge. Then, of course, Mystic Forge untapping can also let us exile the top card over and over at the cost of one life. And then the One Ring, of course, an incredible addition for this deck. We can play it. It'll protect us for a whole turn from incoming damage and hand disruption spells. And then we can slowly increase the burden counters on it to draw more and more cards. And of course, if we combine it with Paradox Engine to untap it over and over, we can essentially draw our whole deck, and then it's not too difficult to win the game, eventually searching up an Aether Flux Reservoir with our Karn of the Great Crater, or we have one copy in the main deck as well we can play, and then gain enough life to eventually deal 50 to the opponent to win the game on the spot. And then I've uh, gone back and forth between how many copies of Karn the Great Creator I want to play, how many copies of the One Ring I want in the main deck, or do I keep one in the sideboard to fetch up with Karn. Decided to leave one copy of the One Ring in the sideboard to get with Karn, since I found myself in a few situations where that was a card I needed to win the game, but I didn't have it in the sideboard yet. So I've gone with three copies main deck, one in the side. And then Karn can also fetch up other combo pieces like our Paradox Engine, if we already have a One Ring in play. And then I've also gone for a Forsaken Monument in the sideboard and one more in the main deck. Not really a necessary card in this archetype, but it is a fun payoff for being a colorless deck as it will essentially double the mana produced by our lands and most of our artifacts and gives our creatures plus two plus two. Also helps us gain more life to maybe offset the one ring or to make it easier to finish out the game with Aetherflux Reservoir. And then I'm also playing one basic Wastes in the mana base alongside a lot of the life gain lands and scry lands. Wastes can be nice to search up if our opponent is playing Field of Ruin for instance. Now do keep in mind you cannot search up a waste if the opponent uses Boseju to blow up one of your artifacts or lands, so that is the downside over playing a regular basic, but because we're playing Forsaken Monument I thought it would be more fitting to include the waste, but that's the type of thing you can spend all night thinking about and probably doesn't make a huge difference. And then I do also have two copies of Blast Zone, and this one is actually important to include in your mana base as an out to Saros Emissary naming artifact, otherwise you wouldn't be able to deal damage to the opponent with your Aether Flux Reservoir, so having another answer like Blast Zone or maybe Soaring City to bounce Saros Emissary can also be important. And then we've got more life gain here with our Radiant Fountain and Crypt of the Eternals, which can be nice against some more aggressive burn decks in the format. Buried Ruin can also be nice against Control to maybe get back one of our artifacts from the graveyard after the opponent maybe countered our two copies of Reservoir, so we can still get those back. And then Inventor's Fair can also gain a bit more life, can also be a tutor effect. And then we've got quite a few Scry Lands with four copies of Crystal Grotto, four copies of Jalfern Void, and then now also one of the legendary Grey Havens. And these also make the deck a lot more consistent, letting us scry, maybe make sure we can keep hitting artifacts off the top of our deck with Mystic Forge without having to pay life, or once we've already tapped the Mystic Forge. So the scry lands are a big part of this deck's success. And then other sideboard card include Tormod Script as Graveyard Hate that we can immediately search up and play. It can also be a zero mana artifact to potentially untap all our stuff once we have a Paradox Engine in play, so just having a cheap artifact in general can be important. And then of course Reservoir is also key. We've got Ancestral Statue, can also go infinite if we have enough mana artifacts in play alongside Paradox Engine or enough of a mana discount. We can just replay Statue over and over again, picking itself up, maybe making infinite mana in the process, and of course gaining infinite life with Aetherflux Reservoir. 
And then we've already discussed the rest of the sideboard choices, except for Cityscape Leveler, which can be another nice answer to problematic permanence, like maybe a Ley Line of Sanctity that's preventing us from killing the opponent with our Aetherflux Reservoir, even though we can also get there with Blast Zone on 4, but a Leveler can be a more immediate answer, which can be nice, but could be replaced with other sideboard cards, like maybe a Darksteel Citadel as a land we can search up with Karn in case we just need one more mana, so that can also be a nice sideboard inclusion. The Might Stone and Weak Stone I've also seen and can also be quite nice as a way to make more mana, can draw when it enters, or maybe blow up a problematic creature. So those are all considerations. But for now, let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Mindstone setting up a turn 3 Mystic Forge. And uh, yeah, I'll use this cry here. Maybe dig for something like a One Ring. Semblance Anvil would also be great. So now I can just play the Crypts. And then we'll wait and see if our opponent maybe has a discard for one of our more expensive artifacts. I can dig for another copy with a second scry. Okay, Indulgence, so maybe a Reanimator deck. And yeah, there's Saros Emissary, which we don't have an easy time of beating if it names artifacts. So then Blast Zone taking up is probably the best way to do it, which might take a while. So anyways, for now... Could also go Cloud Key into some more artifacts, which I don't mind. Can Scry. Don't really need Void. And then we can Scry again with Tome, but can wait until end of turn to do that. So turn 4 is probably when our opponent's going to reanimate here. Maybe discard on burial rites. Yep, there it is. And they also have Parhelion, so our opponent's also playing with Grease Fang. So we've got answers to Emissary on Artifact, at least, with Blast Zone. So it's not game over. Paradox Engine seems like something we should keep. Okay, so I've got five mana available. Not quite enough to double spell here, unless the One Ring draws into a land. And then if we don't, we can still activate Maze Mind Tomb. So let's get the One Ring down. Also protects us from a discard spell next turn. Okay, Mind Stone is essentially free here. And then I might as well draw now to maybe draw into a land. Could have also scryed with Tome before drawing with the One Ring to try and hit a land drop, but also happy to keep something like Mindstone to combo with Paradox Engine. So we'll see if our opponent reanimates Saros Emissary. We will need quite a bit of mana to get our Blast Zone high enough, but we'll get there eventually. Opponent names Artifact. Okay, so start with another Cloud Key. Maybe actually activate the One Ring first, since we might draw Semblance Anvil. So play Cloud Key. Then our goal should be to get Paradox Engine down as soon as possible. Then we want to start tapping and untapping stuff. So we can Scry here. And then we're looking for maybe an Anvil, sure. Float some mana, we can double tap Q from now on as well, to potentially float mana. So, can draw with the ring. Find our anvil, which I guess we can still play a Mystic Forge first. Yeah, mana is not going to be a concern anymore. Can draw as much as we want with the One Ring, since we'll likely play a replacement at some point. So we're pretty much in the click random buttons stage of the game. We've locked it up, except we do need Blast Zone here. And there it is. So that's going to be our land drop for now. And then we want to... 
try and get our uh, life total up with Aetherflux Reservoir, which we have yet to find. Don't want to tap Blast Zone, but we do want to put uh, six counters on it to destroy Setter's Emissary. But now I'm unable to double tap Q to float mana since we need to use Blast Zone. So we can draw again. Right, there's Karn, so that can finally get our Aetherflux Reservoir. That looks good. Can play Monument first, too. So let's make a little bit more mana. Blast Zone gets X equals 6 counters, so we go up to 7 to destroy the Emissary. And then we can keep playing more stuff out just to get our life total high. And now we can double tap Q again. And then it's just a matter of uh, untapping with Blast Zone to win the game. Put another Blast Zone in hand, just in case. And I made sure to leave enough cards in library. Okay, that should more or less suffice. So we're at 200 life. So we'll see if our opponent can find some other way to prevent us from winning next turn. Emissary attacks Karn. I will be better prepared next time. Get a better view of our artifacts now. Untap, lose a bit of life. And then, uh, yeah, activate Blast Zone. And then we've got Reservoir at the ready. Can activate several times in case there's any shenanigans and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw and our hands is good except for the lack of a 2 mana ramp artifact. So if we don't have one of those 12 effects our hand could be a little bit too slow. I do have a void to scry towards one of them. So maybe this is still a keep. Anvil, of course, makes our hand a lot more exciting. I can scry again. Another anvil is not bad, but I think I still prefer a two mana artifact. Opponent with Dombringer Cleric, so it could be a life gain deck. Alright, so we did not find our 2-mana artifact. I'll still play Grotto to try and scry towards a Mind Stone specifically, since I could play it for free of Anvil and then play Cloud Key to keep going. So Karn doesn't seem needed, even though it can eventually get Paradox Engine. We've got plenty of card draw already. So opponent might be on a Flicker deck. They might have Blue in there too. So Skyclave Apparition is a real concern. And that's potentially a reason not to play Anvil right away, although it's possible our opponent's missing their land drop. So I think we'll still give Anvil a shot, because the next turn will be more likely to combo off. One Mystic Forge can go, and then if I can play double Cloud Key next turn, I can play everything for free. Slip on the ring, that's fine. Flicker Companion. So for one mana, they shouldn't really have any interaction. Okay, so step on Cloud Key, name artifacts, play another one. 
And then we can start by playing Mystic Forge, see if we can play something for free of the top. And then once we hit a land, we can play the one ring to draw. Could also, you know, activate our Mystic Forge here. Got a few options. I guess I don't really want to draw Grey Havens, although it is a scry land at least. It's better than playing Fountain. So I'll take it. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough between all the scry and uh, other effects to remove cards from the top of our deck. We're pretty likely to just combo off this turn onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems promising. Turn to idle, turn three anvil, play free mindstone, and then could maybe play Mystic Forge. Wouldn't mind scrying into another land now. Could maybe wait one turn on that. Just play the crypt for now. And then I can pitch Cold Steel Heart to the anvil. Opponent to red green. Is it maybe shamans or goblins? Could be red green goblins. So now I wouldn't mind scrying into a land. Keep the Grey Havens. Play tapped idle. And next turn is going to be exciting. Can play anvil. Play mindstone. Play one mana cloud key. Cavaretti Revels, that's fine. Okay, so kick things off with Anvil. And then we've got a 1 mana Mystic Forge coming up. And a Cold Steel Heart I can play for free, so I can keep it on top. Okay, activate Forge to potentially keep going. Activate Tome to Scry, line to the bottom. Alright, Paradox Engine next turn, so... Yeah, if we get to untap here with everything in play, we're very likely to combo off. Opponents might have a Boseju here, which is why they're looking at our artifacts. And I did make the conscious decision to play Wastes over a regular basic, so we can't actually search up anything if our opponent uses Boseju. Wily Goblin finds a Trap Finder. A War Chief to give the team haste. Another on Archimancer, so they could play something for pretty cheap. But just an attack here, putting us to 10. And uh, yeah, let's kick things off with Paradox Engine. Float a bunch of mana. And then we can play another Mystic Forge to untap everything, although I want to activate stuff first. So, play Guardian Idol off the top now. Could also scry with a Tome here instead, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We've got all the mana in the world, so eventually we'll get there on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and is fine. Turn 3, 1 ring, and then more ramp. We're not necessarily going to combo with the opponent out right away, but uh, an early one ring can certainly draw a lot of cards. Okay, key is a bit more exciting. Start with Guardian Idol still. And then next turn I can play key plus Cold Steel Hearts. And maybe wait on the one ring. If our opponent's on a blue-white control deck, we have to worry about counter spells. Okay. Could also just double spell a two mana artifact so that if they counter one of them, at least my whole turn isn't wasted. But uh, I guess it's good to get counter spells out of the way and play another idol. I suppose there's an edge case where I should play Cold Steel Heart in case of a deputy of detention exiling both guardian idols, but it doesn't seem super likely. And our opponent's gonna tamp down the key. Short. Divine Purge, yeah, that one's effective. And it did find an anvil at least. So we can at least replay everything, even if it's going to take a while to set up. Divine Purge, one of the alchemy cards that's definitely helped the control archetype in Historic. The effect also stacks, so if they were to exile our stuff again, it'll cost four more mana to replay. 
So that is quite painful. Just gotta hope they've got a bunch of creature removal in hand. Forsaken Monuments. I could play. I wonder if I should play Cloud Key first. But then if they counter Cloud Key, I'm also not making any progress. I think it's still worth it. Would rather get Cloud Key countered than Forsaken Monument, even though another Divine Purge punishes Key more. And a charm. Fair enough. So, we're not uh, really developing our board the way I would like, but at least we forced them to use a counter spell. Search for Ascanta is eventually going to turn into a problem, but not too threatening right now. I am a bit worried that I already played my one waste in case your opponent's playing Field of Rune. Might be another Jin tapping down one of our permanents here to deny one mana. Oh, I can resolve my monument now at least. And a cloud key. So I can play key for one mana and then still play monument for two mana. Also tempting to just play the one ring and then hope to draw into a land or like a mind stone would do it too. Sure. Probably more important to establish the card draw as opposed to the mana, which we already have. So play free Maze Mind Tome and an Idol. Okay, so we're not in bad shape. We'll be scrying with Tome end of turn to look for maybe Mystic Forge to play stuff off the top. Karn could be good. The Fairy, okay. Can minus on one of my artifacts, but more likely to plus here. Right, it is gonna minus on the ring. That's fine. So now I can use Tome to essentially redraw it pretty quickly. Another Anvil doesn't seem needed. And then, yeah, if we scry to the bottom, the ring is next. Although at this point I may just draw with Tome since we have so much mana to work with. So I want to tap my Cold Seal Heart since that doesn't make colorless mana to play Monuments. And then we can draw with Tomb. I'm also probably attacking Teferi down here. So I don't want to tap my Guardian Idol if I can help it. Idol also gets buffed by Forsaken Monument, which is pretty sweet. down. Okay, so another Divine Purge could be effective here, but we'll still get to keep our one ring and our Forsaken Monument. Deluge goes digging, so yeah, it's desperation time for the blue-white control deck. Should put an upkeep stop in case I want to scry with Tome, but with so much mana we can just draw. Fragment Reality or one ring, okay. That's pretty effective. So let's just take our draw step, find a Karn, all right, that should solve our problem. So I can play Karn to get a one ring, could also go for Paradox Engine, I guess we'll see what Maze Mind Tome finds first. A Grotto, see what's on top. Mystic Forge, that's a good one. So I can play Karn, get a one ring, and then I'll be able to draw into Mystic Forge to keep going. And yeah, our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn two, idle. Turn three, hopefully Cloud Key plus something else. Although we're still missing a third land here. But might have a Thoughtseize, taking away the One Ring most likely. At least there's still a Maze Mind Tome for a bit of card draw. Or two mana ramp is redundant, so the One Ring is gone. Now we could Scry, and yeah, I 
think I know more or less what I'm looking for. Another card draw engine, another impactful card, and Maze Mind Tomb counts. Play Idle, since that can maybe pressure a Planeswalker. If, like, a Narset shows up, that's a pretty important card to remove from the battlefield. Okay, so it is possible for the opponent to have a counterspell here. Make Disappear, for instance. I think I'm still down to play Cloud Key, or we could just double spell, double Tome. And the first one would also dodge a Make Disappear for what it's worth. If Key resolves, I can play one mana Tome. I don't think we're in a hurry. So sure, let's just play double Tome here. Could now also just pass, plan to draw with Tome, or just play Cold Steel Heart. Which I don't really mind if it gets countered. Okay. And then we'll wait and see if we want to scry with Tome or not. Opponent does have the Bowmasters, so that can punish the card draw from Tome. So yeah, between Bowmasters, Narset, Counterspells and Discard, a blue-black control deck could definitely be problematic. And now with the extra tokens to protect the Narset, it's going to be harder to take out, potentially. Alright, another Thoughtseize likely to take Tomb, so might regret not just playing another one. No, it takes Cloud Key. So given that they didn't take Tomb, I'll scry with the first one. And Mind Stone doesn't seem necessary. I'm looking for some of my 4 mana cards now. So I could scry again with Tomb. Another Mind Stone. Bottom that. And find one anyway. That was triple Mind Stone. So I guess we'll start by playing Tomb. I think actually I should have sequenced differently to play around Make Disappear. But at this point I don't really mind if they counter this. Another Bowmasters. Yeah, that's adding up. So Tomb's very unlikely to want to draw now. Good thing we can still scry with it. And then Mystic Forge is the best way to play around Bowmasters. But I imagine our opponent's got a counter spell in hand too. Karn, okay. So that's kind of a must counter. And we just want to get those counter spells out of their hand. They could let Karn resolve and then counter whatever I search up. Which is what the opponent goes for here. Possible they have a discard spell in hand they want to use. So Karn's gonna die, even if I like plus instead of minus, I don't think that's gonna work. So we'll minus. Stand down. One ring is pretty painful on this board. Could get a reservoir, which would be nice to have in play, but if they counter it or make us discard, it's not the end of the world since there's another one and we can always get it back from the graveyard. Could also go for Forsaken Monuments, which can help gain more life. So it's kind of in a similar boat as a reservoir. Sure, let's go for Forsaken Monument. Still want to leave the one ring and... Uh, Paradox Engine in the sideboard, so we can shooter it with a future Karn. Siphoner, so... That can... Get back Thoughtseize, I suppose. So that's gonna take care of Monuments. So that's all according to plan. Opponent does have a decent amount of pressure now. So if they have one or two more counter spells in hand, it might be over. And drawing with Tome does not seem like a good idea. Some force to just cry. There's our Mystic Forge, so that's must counter number two. That resolved. One ring is next. 
definitely happy to keep that there. Even if I don't draw with it, it still fogs the opponent for a turn. So we're at six. I do have four life gain lined up with Tome. And another ring on top. Okay, so play that one. And a spell thief. Okay. So now that we have the protection from the ring, we can actually draw, and the bowmasters won't be able to hurt us. So let's draw. It will still grow the army, but that's less of a concern. Okay, and then play Fountain. Play Anvil, exiling the One Ring seems fine. And then activate Forge over Scry with Tome. Yeah, I guess we'll start by Scrying. Level that one up as well. And another Forge coming up. Might want to keep that there. Since we're not dead next turn, we get to untap, play another Forge. Seems acceptable. Button plays a one ring, that's fine. Can just wait for the opponent's next turn to finish them off with a reservoir if it gets to that point. And then take our draw step. And let's see here. Start by Scrying with Tomb. And bottom that. Blast it on top could also come in handy. But um, I think we're looking for more action spells. So I could draw with the one ring. That means taking quite a bit of damage. Right now, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I guess we're scheduled to die next turn anyway. So I kind of have to win this turn. So I may as well activate the One Ring. Or uh, activate Mystic Forge. That's fine too. Another turn we can play for free. And there's our Paradox Engine. Okay, so if it weren't for Bowmasters, we had it pretty much locked up here. But we should still be in decent shape. So let's make some mana and scry with tomb. Mindstone I get to play. Question is whether I want to draw with one ring. And I guess I don't have to. And alright, our opponent has seen enough. We'll find a way to win without dying to the Bowmasters, I'm sure. And then we'll eventually just uh, get enough life with Reservoir, wait for the one ring effect to wear off, and then we can hit the opponent for 50. So yeah, even with a lot of disruption, hand disruption, Bowmasters, counter spells, we can still sometimes find a win against these blue-black control decks. And Narset shutting down our card draw can also be very effective, but as we saw here, our deck can still potentially find a win with Mystic Forge, just playing stuff off the top. So the opponent also needs to kind of shut off the top of our library. Of course, a Graph Digger's Cage comes to mind as an effective tool, but uh, not many decks are running that one. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. It's not insane having Reservoir in our openers, not ideal, and uh, much prefer Anvil over Cloud Key, but I don't think I can mulligan Mindstone into the One Ring as a potential line. Got quite a bit of life gain, no lands that scry, but when we have card draw, that may not be necessary. Okay, now we could scry, but didn't really see their needs to, at least not yet. Opponent's blue red could be a wizard deck. The more aggressive variants could be control, we'll see. Okay, just guy control. So 
Now I don't mind scrying with uh, one of my lands. And uh, in general, against control, we want to look for more impactful spells. So Guardian Idol, while not bad since it can pressure Planeswalkers, may not be the priority here. So we'll just play Mindstone. The good thing about Guardian Idol is that I could play it after playing Cloud Key. Opponent Reprieves. So next turn we can try Cloud Key. And then I can scry again with Void. And Karn seems like an impactful card I should keep. Okay, Cloud Key resolves. But our opponent can take it out, it seems. Soul Partition. Okay, so it costs 5 mana now. Opponent stuck on 3 lanes at least. Yeah, I think we put them to the test and just play the one ring. That resolves. Okay. Soul Partition is still potentially a way to exile it. Charm is gonna draw two, so they could have countered, but they didn't. Possible they have a Narset in hand. Nope. So for now we get to draw. Paradox Engine is nice if we can resolve it. So play a land. Buried Rune's a good one too in this matchup. If we need to get back a win condition. Yeah, I think I just go for Paradox Engine right away. Another sort of must counter or remove. And that also resolves. So next turn we could have a pretty nice turn with the one ring drawing a million cards. Alright, never mind. Soul Partition hits Paradox Engine. So they're letting us keep the one ring for card draw. And I will oblige. Okay, another Paradox Engine. Now I can actually more effectively double spell. So I might want to take a different approach, go with, let's say, Cloud Key into either Mindstone or Maze Mind Tomb. Could go Reservoir plus some two mana spells. If I Mindstone first, I could still play Cloud Key afterwards, which might also be reasonable. Although if Cloud Key resolves, I can actually play both Mindstone and Tome, which is a bit more effective. So let's try that. Could also more aggressively use the One Ring to dig for an Anvil, which would be a bit more effective than Cloud Key. Okay, Poon's gonna Snapcaster plus Reprieve, perhaps. So they're starting to apply a bit more pressure now. Which is a good reason not to activate the One Ring too much. Okay, so... Now at least Cloud Key we can replay for 3 mana. Ditch your wastes. Another Cloud Key. So let's give those a try. Play another Cloud Key. That one they'll counter. Okay. That's fine. Play Tome. Play Mindstone. And then I don't feel the need to draw with the One Ring here. Helix down to 13. Do have to watch out for those burn spells. But next turn we've got a good chance of comboing off. And a Divine Purge. Okay, so that's gonna deal with all our cheaper trinkets. So let's cry with Tome first. 
Another tome I don't really need. And then I might want to draw with the one ring now to dig towards a semblance anvil. Take our draw step. Still no anvil. So Cloud Key is 5 mana. Not really a bargain here. So what if we try and get our Paradox Engine going? Play it. Still don't quite get to play two spells afterwards. So yeah, this is a little risky. If I activate the One Ring again, opponent could still have some interaction up here. If I play Reservoir, I can play double Cold Steel Heart to gain some life back. That could also be reasonable. And then next turn go off with Paradox Engine and uh, play Crypt first. All right, opponent does seem to be out of interaction at least. So that gains us some more life back. Our opponent can also replay Snapcaster Mage on a counter spell with an extra mana. Change the equations, gonna counter Cold Steel Heart. Still gain the life. So they've got Snapcaster on Change the Equation or on Soul Partition. Now on uh, Charm as well. So they can counter one spell. So I'm not going to activate the One Ring, I don't think. Or do I? I think I can actually afford to with uh, Reservoir in play. And there's a Semblance Anvil. That's the type of card we need here. So we can turbo out our hand. So, let us start with Anvil. That may get countered, and then what's our sequencing like? I can just play a bunch of cheaper trinkets, take it from there, or I can dig for another Anvil. So, let's say we maybe scry first, see what's on top. Another Anvil, alright, that solves that question. So, play Anvil. Good pitch. Mystic Forge. Then we want to play something for free while we can, so Mind Stone makes sense. Opponent might Soul Partition the Semblance Anvil here. Alright, and our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, with Double Anvil we'll easily be able to replay everything, get a Paradox Engine going, and that should be game. Awesome. So yeah, 6-0 undefeated run here in first tier of Platinum. And in general, I've had very good success with this colorless version of the Paradox Engine One Ring deck. Now it's not the most interactive deck in the format, admittedly, but it is still important for combo decks to be represented in the meta, so we'll just have to wait and see how the meta develops, since there are definitely answers out there. Blue counter spells, but also Narset shutting down all card draw can be incredibly effective, especially if you can protect the Planeswalker from the Guardian Idol attacking it. There's Karn the Great Creator, which will just shut down our deck entirely, so that's an easy answer that a lot of decks can play. And then, of course, Hand Disruption can also be effective. The new Bowmasters punishing card draw, even though, as we demonstrated, it is possible to beat Bowmasters if we get a Mystic Forge going and just start playing stuff off the top. Then there's Graf Digger's Cage to shut down those angles as well, but uh, not a card you see very often. So the answers do exist. It's just a question of whether the meta can successfully integrate these answers into their decks and how will this combo deck in turn adjust to these changes. So that's always an interesting back and forth. But for now, this is a very fun way to play Solitaire. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.